HCAM programming is supported by our viewers, thank you, and by Golden Pond Assisted Living, honoring resident choice, dignity, and independence. Our health and wellness focus keeps residents active. Golden Pond, state-of-the-art senior housing and health care services. And by WPC Pest Control, a family-owned business for over 35 years. Owners Jim and Rebecca Mazzucchelli provide honesty, respect, and integrity, performing safe and effective pest control services. They service your home like it's their home. Hello and welcome to HCAM News, Tom Nappy at the Anchor Desk, to keep you up to date with what's happening in Hopkinton. On this edition of HCAM News, Library Director Ronak Hussein celebrated her retirement with co-workers and friends at the Hopkinton Senior Center. The Library Expansion and Renovation Project broke ground. We'll get you up to date with Hiller's Sports and a local book author, Paul Clarice, joined me in studio to talk about the Boston Marathon. But first, the Hopkinton Police Department welcomed two new officers to the squad. I'll start off with our first officer, uh, Brian Sanchioni. He is from Milford, Mass. He is 23 years old, a 2011 graduate of Milford High School, a 2015 graduate of the Worcester State University, where he uh, obtained a bachelor's degree in criminal justice. You, didn't, uh, you left out the fact that he was a starting center for the football team, too. So it looks like one, doesn't he? <laughs> um, Officer Sankioni decided to pursue a career in law, uh, law enforcement to build community relations, help needs of the public, and to help keep citizens safe. He was sponsored, self-sponsored, through the Reading Police Academy, which means he paid his own way to go, and uh, graduated uh, February of this year. He's extremely excited to begin a long and successful career in the town of Hopkinton. Now, uh, the, the fact that he went out on his own and obtained uh, a certification through the academy certainly helps us financially and uh, also assists us, assists us in replacing officers that retired and getting them on the road uh, within a 12-week period. He's certainly shown dedication and the ambition to become a, a police officer, and I'd like to introduce him now. Well, like Chief said, my name is Brian Sanchioni, 23 years old, come all the way from Milford, Massachusetts, mm -hmm. five minutes down the road. Um, you know, I took this hiring process not knowing what to expect. I was happy enough to get the, get the opportunity, you know, get hired through a great department, and, you know, I've realized in my four weeks working here now that the people here that are behind me are super helpful, um, awesome people, awesome community, and you know I just hope I can do my part in bettering this town. Alex Cruz Vergara, he came to us from <coughs> Falls Church, Virginia, where he served as a police officer with the Falls Church Police Department for over five years. During that time, Alex has served as a field training officer, a general instructor, was a member of the SWAT team, honor guard and won several local and regional awards for his efforts in the uh, OUI prevention and enforcement. Alex has moved here with his son Andreas, his wife Christine, who has recently appointed Associate Provost of Wellesley College. I don't know what that is, but it sounds very important. <laughs> <laughs> Alex is excited to become a member of the Hopkins Police Department and looks forward to applying his skills and experience here. Uh, like uh, Officer Sanchioni, uh, Alex, uh, as attended the academy five years ago, went through the uh, local accreditation pro process becoming a police officer. And obviously his uh, experience in academy were accepted, and he's moving right into the FTO program. Alex, Alex welcome. Thank you Thank for coming you. tonight. You know, God, explain to us why you want to leave Virginia to come up here in the wintertime. <laughs> uh, it was, it was a matter of supporting my wife. <laughs> you know, I, I did what I could. So I'm right, glad to be good. here, though. Good. Well, happy to have you come on in tonight. Uh, Mr. Catino, you want to get any yeah, questions? Uh, yeah, uh, th thank you for, for supporting your wife. Uh, you know, we're, we're, the, uh, uh, we're welcoming the, the riches. Thank you for coming in already um, with uh, five years under your belt um, and some great uh, accreditation, so I really appreciate it. Um, so who got the job first? Did you, you got the job first and you? It's, uh, it's no. interesting, it, actually. 
Um, Christine was approached by some recruiters from Wellesley uh, early on in the summer of last year. Uh, as soon as she expressed interest uh, in the position, I knew to support her I would have to start looking myself. So I began the, uh, the search um, and luckily enough I was picked up by uh, Hopkinton uh, just about a week before she got the official offer. Um, so <laughs> it, it was me first, but Christine was soon to follow. <laughs> Great Photo time. finish. Fabulous. Thanks. Thank you very much for coming. Mr. Sistori. Yeah. Um, you know, this is great. These are, these are the fun nights that we have. Uh, they're, <laughs> they're not all fun uh, up here, but um, these, these, are the, uh, these are the fun parts, uh, you know, where we see people coming in, and we hope that uh, both of you, as well as all the other members of uh, the police force, uh, keep your enthusiasm and, uh, and, and good thoughts for the community. Um, you, know, you guys are, are really uh, part of the foundation of helping create uh, just a good atmosphere throughout the community. Um, and in, it's important for uh, you know, the, the, the kids like your son and, and others uh, to look up to our police force and not see them as a threat, but see them as a partner. And um, you know, with, with the help of the two of you, uh, then we'll be able to continue that in Hopkinton. All right, with that, the chair will entertain a motion to appoint Brian Sanchioni and Alex Cruz Vergata as the newest members of the Hopkinton <coughs> Police Department. So moved. Second. Uh, we have a motion to second. All in favor say aye. 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 That's unanimous, so carries. Gentlemen, congratulations. Welcome to the Hopkinton Police Department. Congratulations and welcome to Hopkinton officers, Cruz Vergara and Sankioni. Nearly two years after being voted through at town meeting and town election, the Hopkinton library expansion and renovation project broke ground this past week. Many were on hand to witness the official kickoff ceremony to the library construction project. At the May 2014 town meeting and town election, residents approved funding for the library expansion and renovation project. The project cost is over $11 million. $4.5 million will be covered through state grants and another million through fundraising, while the remaining amount will be covered by the town. After a lot of hard work, planning the project, fundraising, and moving the library, to their temporary home at 65 South Street. On Friday, March 11, 2016, the ground was broke, officially marking the beginning of the library expansion project. My role here today is really to, add, to talk about one question, which is, why do we care so much? Uh, you know, why do we need quiet buildings full of dusty old reference books in, in an age when everything's available on the internet and all books can be read electronically? And that has been uh, sort of the crux of the issues we've gone through here. So just to, just to recap why we, this matters. Uh, it matters because libraries are critical to communities for any number of reasons. Um, it's obviously the intellectual heart of any town. Even in an age when information is ubiquitously available, it seems, it does provide historical co background, context, and synthesis of multiple sources that constitutes real knowledge. Possibly the greatest risk in today's multi-channel world is that most of us only use a few sources for our information and thereby risk falling prey to a single point of view. Libraries provide breadth and depth that let us draw our own conclusions. We also care because libraries uniquely provide a gathering place for an entire town. We used to have many more institutions that would bring people together in, in broad groups, but our opportunities for those kind of interactions nowadays have become limited. People talk what is the hub or, uh, or the heart of, of a town could be town hall, it could be a coffee shop. I would argue it's clearly the library. The library is the gathering place. It's the place where people come, of kids of all ages, to, to get books, to take out resources, to have meetings, to talk and to share a community. And that serves such an incredibly important function. This day and age now, too, as more and more information goes online, there are many people, we don't realize, many people cannot afford a computer. So a library offers that as well for resources, for job searches, for so many other things, and for sharing information with their families. So I, I really believe that the library is the heart and soul of any, uh, any town, any community, and adds so much 
to community. Um, I do have a um, citation, uh, one from the House uh, on behalf of Carolyn Dykema and one from the Senate uh, to the Hopkinton Public Library on the joyous occasion of the groundbreaking of the renovation of the Hopkinton Public Library. Uh, and I have, so I have the one from the Senate and one from uh, Rep Dykema, who was noted uh, wanted to be here. And I also have one for our terrific retiree. Uh, incredible efforts here and for your 11 years of dedicated service to the Hopkinton community and the joyous occasion of your retirement. Congratulations. So whether you want to advance your career, learn something, keep up with technology, or ensure your child's success, the library is a stick place to start. With the recent recession, libraries have become even more important than ever, providing free access to information, lectures, and programs. With your new building, you're going to do all of this and so much more. You know, I think that a groundbreaking is a perfect time to make predictions. So I predict that about 16 months from now, you're all going to be here and you're going to be saying things like, can you believe how fabulous this new building is? Have you seen the children's room? Look at all the technology. Do you love the meeting rooms? And a few of you might also be saying, why did we wait so long? <laughs> well, we know why towns wait so long. It's not easy to find the money to build a new library. This is a big deal. A few of you this morning actually asked me if I could believe it, if I was really believing what was happening, and I think just at this moment it's hitting me, looking out and seeing all of you here. It is so wonderful and so exciting for our town to have had so much support and to have this wonderful group of people who has worked so hard to see this wonderful thing come to fruition. And as you've heard from our earlier speakers, it has been a team effort from day one. I, there have been numerous individuals and groups, some almost too many to mention, but it has been a team effort. Together, it has been the library trustees, the friends of the library, Hopkinton Public Library Foundation, the library director and library staff, have all collaborated with the town, the town manager, the board of selectmen, the permanent building committee, the town engineer, and several town boards and committees have all worked together to bring us to this point. Thank you all. Thank you very much. All right, I'll pass that to Ready, throw it. <laughs> the Hopkinton Library Project is expected to take about 16 months to complete. Coming up next on HCAM News, co-workers and friends hosted a retirement celebration for Library Director Ronak Hussein. We'll get you up to date on Hiller's postseason play and local book author Paul Clarisi joined me in the studio. A lot more ahead. Stay tuned. HCAM News is supported by our viewers and by Hopkinton Drug, located in this historic New England town since 1954. They are a multifaceted store dedicated to providing clients with an array of health care options. And by Webster First Federal Credit Union, providing financial products with attentive customer service to the local families and businesses of Hopkinton. Visit us at WebsterFirst.com. Do you have what it takes? Make a difference. Always an adventure. Police and fire working together.
utilizing the latest technology. Do you have what it takes? Welcome back to HCAM News. After 11 years of service, Library Director Ronak Hussein announced she will be retiring to spend more time with her family. Recently, coworkers and friends hosted a retirement celebration for Ronak at the Senior Center. After 11 years with the Hopkinton Public Library, Director Ronak Hussein is retiring. Many coworkers and community members were in attendance at the Senior Center to celebrate the many accomplishments and the many years of hard work Ronak has given to the library. You do. Well, I'm guessing. <laughs> it's the, the first book. <laughs> uh, it's her vigor, her devotion to duty, her passion, her courtesy, caring attitude and high fidelity with which she performed the most difficult tasks, whether it was advocating for the addition and the renovation to the library, advocating for her staff, presenting her budget, scheduling a community event, or simply helping a client at the library. All of these were in evidence for all of us to watch and enjoy. She's here because she wants to help people, and I see that every single day coming in to work with her. Everything that she does as library director is done with that aim in mind. In fact, one of the biggest concerns, I think, when she was telling me she was going to retire that kept coming up was she was so concerned that her retirement would not disrupt our ability to do the very best we could do for our community. And it's a testament to her excellent management over the past 10 years that it will not, that we will be able to run on as a well-oiled team doing what we do best, thanks to her leadership up to this point. On the occasions when I've watched her having to deal with difficult and disruptive people, which everybody who works in public service has to do at some point in time, uh, the compassion and the grace with which she has approached these people, even when sometimes she has to be quite strict, has set up a model for me that I am going to strive to emulate for the rest of my career. And as a boss, she's the kind of boss everybody wants because she's the kind of boss that really, really cares about her people. Not just that we excel at what we do, but that we love what we do, that we're fulfilled coming into work, and that we have the support and the space to grow as much as we want to, as much as we can as professionals and as people. It's been amazing working with Ronak. I really miss her tremendously. I think everybody's basically been saying nobody's happy about her leaving, but we all think that she has an impeccable and unarguable reason for doing so. Um, and we really just wish her all the best. It's like, I think it's a once in a lifetime situation that you get an opportunity like this when you start something from scratch and really and, and have an opportunity to work with so many different people. We remember all of them are a piece of this puzzle. It's just not one person. It's just so many people are all plugged in together and it's, it's amazing. It's like, a, it's like a nice orchestra, you know? It's wonderful and I'm absolutely um, honored, grateful, and I'm happy that I had that experience that will always remain with me forever, no matter what I go. Thanks. I'm looking forward to taking, you know, spend some time with my family, take it easy, do the things that I I couldn't do on a regular basis, like go out for a walk. Um, you know, go to community events, participate, do some volunteer work, things that I just never had the time to do. Um, it's a very exciting time for the library. Uh, technology planning, service planning, when that new library door opens, because Hopkinton does not have a nice place where everyone can go, and the library is going to be that community center, that place where everyone can go and enjoy. 
Congratulations to Ronak on her tremendous accomplishments as library director. She will certainly be missed around the community. Local book author Paul Clarisi stopped by the HCAM studios. Paul will be presenting at the Senior Center on Wednesday, March 30th at 7 p.m. He will be talking about his latest book release, Boston Marathon, History by the Mile. Tom Nappy here alongside Paul Clarisi. Paul is the author of three books, A History of the Falmouth Road Race, Running Cape Cod, Boston Marathon, History by the Mile, and History of the Greater Boston Track Club. Paul, how are you today? How are you doing? How are you doing? Very good. I understand you have a couple presentations coming up in the Hopkinton area. You want to talk about those and some of the topics you'll be addressing in those presentations? It all starts here, right, in Hopkinton. Um, yeah, right. the Hopkinton Public Library. Although during renovations, um, they're changing venues, so I'll be at the Senior Center. Uh, that's March 30th. And then uh, April, April 17th, day before the marathon, the uh, Hopkinton Historical Society right on Hayden Row. Uh, I'll be speaking in, with the uh, Hoppington and Ashland Historical Societies at a joint meeting uh, event there. So be, that's going to be a lot of fun. I mean, Hoppington, Ashland, the whole area in the beginning of the marathon, it's just, it's, it all starts here. That's right. <laughs> it really it's, does. It's the place to be. Yeah. Uh, now tell us about your presentation on uh, March 30th. What's that presentation going to be about? Um, I'll focus on Hopkinton. Usually, when I when I speak about the marathon, I, I talk about the entire course, which I will. But if I'm on, if I'm in a town that's part of the course, I'll obviously focus on that. And Hopkinton has great history. Obviously, you know the f four starts uh, have been here. Um, Ashland has uh, had their own starts uh, since 1924. It started uh, in ha has started in Hopkinton. We have the Johnny Kelly Crossing in the center of town, the Starter Statue, the Elmwood School uh, mm -hmm. welcomes the uh, Kenyan mm -hmm. runners. Uh, it's just a great place, the Athletes Village. I mean, it's just, I, I love the, the marathon week leading up to it. The police in Hopkinton stop traffic so the tourists can get their picture taken with the start line. Yep. You know, which I don't know if the drivers like that that much, but you know, it's a lot of fun. <laughs> and that big sign that all starts here, right in the center of the common. Right. So yeah, it's, it's, a great, it's a great place. It's like a, a nice carnival event happening you know in, in this town it's it's really it's nice to be part of oh absolutely yeah. a lot of great traditions uh, happen here around yeah. the hopkinton area now uh, why don't you talk about this book a little bit boston marathon history by the mile yeah it was a lot of fun to write i've run boston 23 years um and i've covered it for uh almost 30 years so there's so many stories that i just had in my head like as a runner you look forward to certain things along the course you know there's, there's a statue here there's a there's a family that always has a barbecue in this town so I wanted to put all that as much as I could in the book. So uh, each town along the route has its own chapter. So uh, obviously one of the first ones is Hopkinton chapter. So within that chapter, I tell a little bit about how the town got its name, of course, and things like that. But then I delve right into um, this portion of the course. You know, Hopkinton is just under two miles mm -hmm. uh, of the course. Um, some of the things that happened during the race in each town, um, how to run little part, I talked to Coach Squires, Bill Squires, who coached Bill Rogers, Alberto Salazar, a lot of the top runners who had won, won this in the 70s and 80s. Um, and he gave like a paragraph or two, good advice of how to run each portion of the course, what to expect, um, some fun anecdotes and tidbits that happen along each part of the course. So it's, it's a neat... You can catch more of my interview with Paul Clarisi airing soon on HCAM News Focus. There were two Hillers teams left standing in the playoffs coming into this week, boys hockey and girls basketball. Unfortunately, both seasons came to an end as boys hockey fell to Norwell in the district semifinals 6 to nothing, and girls basketball fell to Notre Dame Academy in their district semifinals 61 to 48. Congratulations to both teams on tremendous seasons. You can see many Hiller's amazing playoff sports games coming up on the HCAM channels. And to tell you more about our upcoming program, here is Courtney with our HCAM Insider. Hello everyone, and welcome to the latest edition of the HCAM Insider. On Friday, March 18th at 8 p.m., Tim Kilduff discusses the 26.2 Foundation and Boston Marathon on a new Hopkinton coffee break. Both okay. George V. Brown and Walter Brown are in the Hockey Hall of Fame in Toronto, Canada because they were accredited 
with developing the sport of hockey union in the United States. On Monday, March 21st at 7 p.m., Sam Baylor performs his original music on Wake Up and Smell the Poetry. Just want to look at the pictures on the wall And I don't want to listen to the barking of my mom at 8.30 p.m., common skin disorders and their causes are discussed, along with preventative steps and how they can affect overall health on Physician Focus. Everyone does a lot of things to their skin. They, they wash their skin, they moisturize their skin, um, they apply things to their skin, and all of those things can be contributing factors as well. So it's really a combination of you know, things that you're born with and then things that you do to your skin. On Tuesday, March 22nd at 6.30 p.m., a new HCAM News Focus will air, showing the Hopkinton Public Library groundbreaking ceremony. Then at 7 p.m., another HCAM News Focus will air, with Paul Clarice discussing his new book and sharing interesting Boston Marathon stories. On Thursday, March 24th at 7 p.m., the school committee meeting will air live on HCAM TV. Don't forget to check out our HCAM Insider newsletter at hcam.tv connect for information on all of these programs and more. Or if you want to find out about Hopkinton events, check out our daily news updates. As always, thanks for watching HCAM. Now back to you, Tom. Thank you, Courtney. That will just about do it for this edition of HCAM News. Right now on our website, you can view the entire Hopkinton Public Library groundbreaking ceremony. And don't forget to stay up to date with everything Hopkinton by checking out our website, hcam.tv, as well as our Twitter and Facebook page. If there is a photo, video, or story idea you would like to share with us, feel free to email me at news at hcam.tv. With your help, cover even more of our community. For everyone here at HCAM, I'm Tom Nappy. We leave you now with the current community listings and upcoming government meetings. Take care and thank you for watching.